Hi folks, this tutorial will focus on using Faceware real-time for iCloud. It's quite straightforward, but there are some important things to bear in mind. First is the camera. Whilst the system will work even on relatively low frame rates, the resulting animation will be choppier the lower your frame rate is. So ideally your camera should support at least 30 frames a second for good quality capture and streaming. Let me show you. Currently my camera supports 30 frames a second and you can see in the information panel up here that's what's coming through. I'm going to change that frame rate and show you what happens. So now down to 15 frames a second and if you take a look at both the tracking markers on my face as well as the animation um, everything's become a lot glitchier um, a lot more staccato if you like um, so it's simply not as smooth as using 30 frames a second and 30 frames a second really is the minimum you need to get good quality capture more than 30 frames a second it's going to be smoother still and obviously that's going to give you even better animation okay um, I'm going to move on to take you through the settings panel in more detail so first I'll just turn off this preview and open up Facewares real-time for iCloud window fully. So opening up the settings panel from the edit menu here you'll see that we have three drop-downs. The first drop-down shows you whichever cameras you have actually tied into your system at the moment and below whichever cameras you have you have a slot for an image sequence. Now an image sequence is specifically a PNG image sequence which you can either produce from a video editor which supports it or you can use iClone itself to render out a PNG sequence from any video you have in iClone. So that's your camera selector and next to that you have camera options. You have whichever resolutions your camera supports. Now resolution is tied to frame rate. Um, you will find whichever resolution you select will give you certain options on frame rate. The current one I'm using 640 by 480. I'm finding that gives me decent results. Um, and I have options here up to 30 frames a second. But again, depending on your camera, depending on the resolution, um, you may have much more up to 60 or even more if you're using a professional camera. Now, as I said, frame rate is tied to resolution. So let me just show you how to handle high frame rate cameras. I'll set the camera to Logitech Bryo which is capable of up to 90 frames a second but only on certain resolutions. So I'll change the resolution to 1280 by 720 in MJPEG format and you'll see that now it's capable of up to 90 frames a second. I just set it at 60 here. But the problem is higher resolutions can actually slow things down because of the additional processing load on your computer. So when using a high frame rate camera you can go up to the edit menu in Faceware Real-Time for iClown and select Enable Optimization. This will reprocess the camera feed resolution in Faceware Real-Time down to a 640 base whilst keeping the higher frame rate enabled. But for now, I'll switch back to my original 30 frames a second camera for the rest of the tutorial. back in camera options. At the bottom here we have image sequence frames a second so when you have loaded a PNG sequence you can actually choose the frame rate of the PNG sequence manually. So that's camera options. Below camera options you have a rotate image function which depends very much on how your camera is oriented or mounted. So if for example you're using a head mounted camera um, for example my rig, my head rig actually has a camera mounted 90 degrees so I switch the camera around using the rotate image function. Let's take that back again. And finally you have the face tracking model. You have two options here, one for static cam and one for head cam. Let me just show you the head cam. You'll see that the facial tracking lines have changed. Now these two tracking models are very specific to how you use the system and if you are using a head mounted camera it's recommended that you use the head cam tracking model because it's designed for it. It's designed for your face to be much closer to the camera 
um, to cope with different uh, feature extents and also um, lens effects. Similarly, the static camera. The static camera is also a very specific model for using when you have a camera mounted in front of you um, on the desk. So I'm currently using the static camera and I'll keep on using the static camera for the rest of this demonstration. Now, I will be demonstrating um, head cameras and discussing head cameras in another tutorial. Focusing then on the static cam tracking model, I want to show you what happens when you move your head out of range. Let me just turn my head. You can see that tracking gets lost when you go too far. Therefore, it's important to respect the system's limits by trying to keep your head rotations to relatively to a minimum within around 25 to 30 degrees because anything beyond that you're going to start to lose tracking. Um, and more than that, if you notice, just as I rotate my head, even when the system is still tracking, for example there, the eyebrows are actually changing shape and this is actually going to affect the um, character's expression slightly. So simply be aware that you do need to limit head rotation, not go too far, in order to get best results. Beyond head rotation, head position is also very important. I'll be discussing calibration in more detail in a moment, and this section is very relevant to calibration, but generally for head position as well. I've just gone up to the edit menu and I'm going to enable a grid overlay. The central box in the grid is the optimum position for your features. And by this I mean if you can Take it so that your bottom lip is on the bottom line and your eyebrows are roughly at the top line. Um, and looking straight into the camera, you will be in the optimum position for facial capture. And as long as your head is in this central place and your rotations are relative to that, you will get the best results. If you are off to the side, if you were below, if you are high, if your head is tilted, Again, results aren't going to be as good as they could be. The optimum position is to use the grid overlay and to have your features balanced within it, as if taking a passport photograph. And on this subject, um, let's get on to calibration because, as I mentioned in the initial overview video, calibration is a very important step which matches your neutral expression to the character's default neutral before starting animation. So whenever you calibrate, this is your calibration position. Looking straight into the camera with your facial features balanced in the central box, you take a relaxed expression. The mouth, if you open your mouth slightly, you will find you will get better results for lip sync because close of expressions, expressions whereby the lips are closed will be more emphatic. If you have your mouth tightly closed then those expressions won't be so, em so emphatic. So for calibration this is your default position. Again if you calibrate off to the side, if you calibrate below, if you have your head tilted, results won't be as optimal as they could be. What I want to show you now is what happens um, when you tie in a character without actually calibrating. So I'll just minimize the window, ensure that Faceware Real-Time for iClone is connected to the plugin. The boxer is currently selected. I'm not currently calibrated, so let's just preview on that. And as you can see, the features become extremely distorted and the animation is not correct. Something to bear in mind with this whole system is it is very sensitive. It needs to be very sensitive in order to be able to effectively translate motion capture through to the um, 3D characters. So I'll show you what happens now on correct calibration. And you can see instantly we've got far better control and the animation is performing much more naturally and correctly. Now, calibration is something which you do need to perform regularly. It's a, it's a very simple step. It's simply a matter of clicking the um, calibrate button and you can do this during preview. You can even do it during recording. But 
One of the reasons for calibrating regularly is that the fact is no system is perfect. And one of the noticeable issues about the Faceware real-time for iClone approach is that the head will slowly rotate upwards over time. Um, this is something which some folks may find a bit frustrating and the quickest way to solve it is that you press calibrate face again but let me just show you before that what happens over time with the head because I just nod my head up and down and I'll raise my eyebrows just change my facial expressions and if you notice on the 3D character view the head is moving upwards I'll just calibrate my face again And you can see it comes back down to zero. So it's important to calibrate regularly. It's important to calibrate well in order to get the best results for animation. Another major point to consider is lighting and whilst the system is very robust in terms of lighting, let me just turn off a light here. Um, you'll see that tracking still works. It does remarkably well even in uneven lighting. Um, it is recommended that you try to get as balanced lighting as possible. That will give you the best results because, quite simply, if you have higher contrast on one side of the face than the other, um, you will get a certain amount of feature distortion. So, as I say, try to go for even lighting wherever possible. Another point to mention is spectacles. I'm wearing spectacles because I need to, but my glasses have quite thin frames and they don't really interfere much with the motion capture, which is why I'm wearing them for all of these demonstrations. However, if you have very thick framed spectacles, heavy frame glasses, also if you wear tinted glasses, um, you might have some serious problems because the system can confuse the frames and even the lenses if they're tinted with your eyes and eyebrows and in some cases the motion capture won't work so if you're struggling and you're wearing glasses um, that may actually be the problem you may need to remove your glasses for motion capture or ask the user that you're working with to remove their glasses for the capture one last point and that is just on the face wear real time for iCloud window and that is the information button up here just toggling through you'll see that you can turn off the information you can just show frames per second or you can have full information which tells you whether iClone is currently connected the resolution of the video which is coming through the tracking frames per second and the video frames per second as well as whether the system is calibrated uh, this is extremely useful information to be honest I tend to keep this up most of the time okay so that's faceware real time for iClone in the next tutorial, I'll cover the functions of the facial mocap plugin itself and how it works with Faceware Real Time in more detail. Thanks for watching.